Hey guys, uh, back for the second part of this uh, Kicker um, CVT 12 inch uh, subwoofer repair. I know I uploaded the first part some time ago. I really haven't had a chance to work on it. So this is a good opportunity to kind of pick up where I left off. So if you are just catching up, go ahead and watch the other video. It's not very long and I will try to make this one pretty brief too so we can walk through uh, the standard process that I've been kind of doing for all the other subwoofer repairs I have. Um, and go from there. So if you recall, this subwoofer had uh, pretty bad up, excuse me, bad um, burnt up voice coil um, and hence it locked up. And as I took it apart, everything just kind of disintegrated. So uh, what I was able to do uh, from the first time that we uploaded that first video to now was finally receive uh, the voice coils um, uh, for replacement. And this came from Lorda Bass. Uh, so this is a... Uh, uh, let me get my paper, which is very important. So this is a two inch um, diameter voice coil. Uh, in fact, I am just going to kind of put it right here in the frame. So I ended up selecting number one, which is a two inch OD uh, single flat copper uh, voice coil. Again, because the previous one was so burnt up, I couldn't really take proper measurements. So this was just kind of a process of elimination and best engineering estimate uh, to find a replaceable voice call for it. And it turned out to actually be a really good fit. So um, I'll put the part number in the uh, description here of the video if you guys are interested. But I know this is a very popular size, not just for Kicker, but a lot of the other subwoofers that have also uh, been able to repair, including that JBL. So uh, two inch outer diameter overall, about two inch height. Uh, with about a 1.2 inch uh, copper winding height. So here it is, uh, got it in there. Looks really, really good. Um, I was uh, able to go ahead and salvage the same spider. So I'm gonna use that again. Uh, it, it just kind of saves a few bucks here and there. Since again, this is just a repair. I don't expect to bring it back to new condition, but I think it'll just operate uh, normally as expected without having to really replace it. So. Uh, what I did here uh, is install uh, the voice coil uh, properly. I got it all aligned, I got it leveled. Uh, I went ahead and removed all of the old uh, tinsel leads that were uh, uh, kind of uh, whatever you want to call threaded uh, throughout the spider. Um, and I removed the old ones. And what I am doing is these are the actual leads that come from Lord of Base attached to the uh, voice coil itself. So I'm gonna utilize those. Uh, uh, just makes sense and then what I did is went, went ahead and routed them where they can really come out in a good point uh, for the already previous uh, uh, holes that were placed in there to thread the previous tinsel leads so um, I was able to go ahead like I said get it aligned I uh, got it in there got it epoxied I did reinforce the uh, copper vo uh, voice coil uh, leads coming out of the top of the voice coil uh, right to that inner of the dust cap uh, again, what I like about this dust cap, it does have a lot of holes, which again will help uh, with air circulation as it's uh, a transitioning, uh, you know, uh, in, in play basically. So that that movement will allow air to circulate around the voice coil, move a little bit of that heat around. Whether it's a sealed enclosure, may not have as much impact. Ported certainly does, uh, but it you know moving that heat around actually helps out significantly not just the voice coil but also the motor just because of the heat transfer to the voice coil and voice coil to the motor so that being uh, said you can see here the tinsel leads coming directly out of uh, where the voice coil is routed right through the spider uh, it is insulated which is always a plus so i like that thank you lord of base um yeah uh it's it's down there pretty good uh tolerance is pretty nice uh, in parallel, I went ahead and, uh, oh, one, one important part since I have this up. So this is a voice coil I mentioned uh, that I selected here. Um, and if you recall, usually with my videos, if, if a previous voice coil was on, I would take the proper dimensions to see where I seat it. Uh, these are the dimensions where I decided to kind of uh, place my voice coil. So when you look at the very top, you see where the spider is. And I measure from where the voice coil touches the surface of the spider down to the very bottom of the voice coil. And that came out to be about 39 millimeters. Why is that important? Uh, if you have it very long or very short, there's a chance of, again, it can jump the gap. And then you've got kind of a pretty much messed up subwoofer and you gotta take it all apart. 
or if you make it too long uh, and it's longer than that 39 millimeters, way longer, what it's gonna do is gonna continue bottling them out on the bottom of the uh, bottom plate there. So on the opposite end on the very bottom. And what that's gonna do is just destroy the voice coil as well. So I found a good medium. Uh, again, there's a rule of thumb out there uh, in regards to uh, usually you place the copper voice coil halfway through that gap height. So the gap is from the inner pole to the outer uh, plate inner diameter, uh, but there's also the gap height. So from you know where the surface is all the way down to the bottom plate. So I just have half of that um, to align with the total length of the copper voice coil itself. So uh, looks good, the fitment is good. And so the next step, what I wanna do, this is kind of a pain in the rear, is how they have the terminal lugs here uh, terminated. Um, I actually have to feed the tinsel leads right through a very tiny hole uh, that's attached to these push spring terminals. And it's gonna be very tricky because what I wanna do is usually I, I put epoxy on the inner ring here where the spider goes, and then I put epoxy on the outer ring of the actual spider, right? Um, and, and that allows me to bond it again back into its original place. Because of this being a low profile, when I put it on there, I'm not gonna have any access. As you can see, there's nothing below the spider that I can access the leads. So what I'm gonna have to do is actually install the leads first and then um, add my epoxy carefully without bending or messing up any of the tolerances that I have. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go ahead and solder, uh, or run these uh, tinsel leads right through and solder them. What that's gonna do, it's gonna allow me to move the spider up just a little bit and that way I can get a, uh, my adhesive all the way around. Um, I'll set it in. I'll put my spacers to space out the inner pole from the actual voice coil so it's equally spaced out uh, and, cent and centered and aligned. Uh, what I also did here is if you see, uh, there was some previous adhesive that held the surround in place. I love the surround that Kicker uses. This is that rubber, very versatile, I guess butyl rubber uh, surround. Robust, doesn't fade, doesn't rot. Um, and it really helps, uh, you know, this is an important part of the suspension. So this is considered part of the suspension and so is the spider itself, right? This is kind of what makes it go up and down and controls the linearity of the subwoofer itself. So anyways, uh, I, what I did is I cleaned up all the previous adhesive that was holding the uh, uh, previous um, uh, spider in place. No, I'm sorry, not the spider, excuse me, the surround. So I removed all that. I took my grinding wheels. You can see nice silver coating. That way it's a nice surface and it's actually a somewhat abrased uh, surface. So I did kind of use an abrasive in here uh, to help when I put new adhesive on that it really bonds to that new rubber and holds it in place. So, uh, all right. So let me go ahead and get these soldered in and then I will put the adhesive around here. I'll probably use just uh, E6000 to allow it that uh, strength, but yet still be flexible. It's it's a hard rubberized uh, material, and I'll probably use E6000 here as well, as that's pretty sufficient, especially when you put the uh, gasket ring on. So here we go. Okay, so got the tinsel leads soldered, uh, again, to these uh, push spring terminals on the very bottom. And what I had to do, again, as I mentioned, I ran it through the spider, I ran it under the spider here through this lip and that's where I soldered onto these push spring terminals right below. So now that I've got them soldered, I'll go ahead and apply my adhesive uh, around the edge of the actual spider, as well as the edge of the bottom plate where the spider is gonna mate. Um, drop it in there. I'm gonna use my voice coil spacers uh, to ensure that it is equally spaced inside of that gap and we don't have one side rubbing or the other. And once that kind of adheres and is good to go and I'm comfortable with it, what I'll do is I'll go and put all of my adhesive on the edge uh, where I'll mount the surround to the edge and then secure it with a whole bunch of clips all around the uh, circumference of the frame itself. So, um, all right, so here we go. Here it is guys, finally got uh, everything assembled. So I was able to adhere the surround um, and before I, uh, place this rubber gasket here so as you can see I've got the entire surround secured the surface was clean and I used uh, E6000 for that so this is the gasket I chose to put around the frame um, again uh, these are uh, pretty popular now in fact most of the new manufacturers are putting these rubberized uh, exterior uh, gaskets it helps with the ceiling 
Uh, that being said, it, it's looking good. I've got it all centered and just kind of running right now. It's a 20 hertz tone. Um, got the tinsel leads secured. So you can kind of see in there, it's are flopping up and down. Uh, secured to the cone and secured to the bottom. Um, the spider looks like it's in great shape. So we've got the spider all adhered as well. Uh, we leveraged the older spider so we didn't have to replace the new one. But as you can see, here it goes. Um, yeah, a little bit of uh, some power, should I say, a little power, and then we'll crank it up here slowly, but it's moving, uh, looking good. A lot of air. Probably here it comes through the mic. And you can definitely feel it back here, so um, crank up a little bit more power. Let's see, so we've got almost six amps at the input of the amplifier. Get that up a little bit. Mm. We got about 16 amps. 